it's not necessarily um, a happy ending, it's just a better ending because these drugs will kill you. Addiction is always involuntary. I mean, I know that when I was in pain, I didn't care what I was taking. I had no idea until I got into rehab that I was basically a heroin addict. Of course now I think, why didn't I do it sooner? Why did I let it get there? But it was because I was ashamed. I was so ashamed of myself. I was so, I felt so degraded. Yeah, so my GP knew quite quickly. So he said, you know, you're a drug addict. I absolutely refused to admit it. Um, and so we sort of, like I said, we started this kind of twisted dance between us where he, in effect, became my dealer um, and, and I became a drug addict. My drug dealer was a doctor, doctor, had the plug from Big Pharma, Pharma. He said that he would heal me, heal me, but he only gave me problems, problems. My drug dealer was a doctor, doctor, had the plug from Big Pharma. It's always it has been a problem, but, but certainly over the last four or five years, I think it's become more of a problem. And so especially in terms of not only just prescription medication, but also over-the-counter medication as well. So this is kind of medication that you can buy from the pharmacy as well. So it is increasing. I've got a feeling that we're probably it, it's more like the what we're seeing is actually it's the, the tip of the iceberg. Those pills, that crumb, that roach. Thinking I will never do that, not that drug. Growing up, nobody ever does. Until you're stuck looking in the mirror like I can't believe what I've A drug addiction comes in uh, in many different guises, really. Um, basically, you can have a physical addiction or you can have a mental addiction. We talk about prescription drugs and addiction. There are three main kinds. There's the opioid. Um, there's a stimulant and there's a depressant. So the opium based ones, codeine, cocodimol, painkillers, people will abuse those widely because it makes them feel better. So, so the main ones that we're seeing over the counter medications is, th is things like combinations of paracetamol and codeine, um, also combinations of neurofen and also codeine as well. And also things like cough medicines. So some of them have like opioid-like constituents in cough medicine as well. And also now and then we see people that get addicted to things like antidepressants as well. So that's another problem. Yeah, so my GP knew quite quickly within about four weeks of me taking extra lozenges. So he said, you know, you're a drug addict. I absolutely refused to admit it. Um, and so we sort of, like I said, we started this kind of twisted dance between us where he, in effect, became my dealer. Um, and, and I became a drug addict. And um, he, I know from talking to him that he was trying to work a process with me but it took us right up to um, you know, this extreme position where by the time he actually cut me off and said, I'm not prescribing any more painkillers, I was on 60 fentanyl lozenges a day and you know, all on prescription from him. It's true that uh, older and middle-aged women are one of the, the risk groups, but there are many others and indeed anyone uh, can develop a dependency. I would first of all take their uh, face value, what they are saying to me, um, but I would also uh, sort of use some, some clinical skills to, to try and assess uh, what pain they're actually in um, and to what extent that's physical, what, to what extent that's psychological. Um, and, and it's often a very difficult thing. We don't always get it right either. So it's not necessarily um, a happy ending, it's just a better ending because these drugs will kill you, essentially. Um, if you're abusing them in the way that I was abusing them, then they will, you know, they will kill you. Frequently feel that under pressure and I think that is one of the warning signs uh, that, that I have really, that if I'm feeling that, um, then, then just to try and explore that a little bit. And it is a lot harder to say no than it is to write a prescription.
So it happened uh, over a series of time. In 2004, I was struck down overnight with a, with a very serious condition called acute on chronic pancreatitis. And I spent nearly four years um, mostly in hospital. I was on an IV morphine drip, and the times I was sent home, I was sent home on oxycodone, another opioid. Um, in 2007, I was referred up to a London hospital to a specialist department, and they switched me on to IV fentanyl. Um, I was discharged at the start of 2008 from hospital uh, with a repeat prescription for fentanyl lozenges um, and really by that stage I was heavily dependent on opioids. Um, the fentanyl saved my life and then of course it, it nearly killed me. I think it's beholden on all GPs when issuing strong analgesics to um, uh, give that with a caveat and a warning that actually be careful we don't want you to take these regularly because they, they you could develop a dependency um, so I think that, that we have responsibilities uh, when we, we're doing that I think that we often do over medicalize things and actually you know uh, a pill for every ill there is not I would get my prescription from the GP and I would shout and scream and lie about having pain attacks and manipulate and do anything I could to get that green slip of paper. I'd then go home and I would binge on them. I would then eke out the remaining lozenges until the very earliest time I could go back to the GP and get the next prescription. I mean, it was literally hell. What people tend to do is uh, do circuits of different pharmacies because you're only allowed to buy a couple of packets. And obviously, the pharmacists get to know you, so then people are going out of town to buy them and, and getting, getting uh, just use them as drug dealers basically. Pharmacists. Someone may um, buy a medicine from a pharmacy, say like Lemsip, and then go and buy um, a packet of paracetamol for elsewhere. We see people uh, returning for, for um, medication. Sometimes it's genuine, sometimes they've um, spoken to the, the doctor and they've got permission to buy certain painkillers. But um, yeah, there's plenty of little um, sort of schemes that we have in place. Um, we've got a good relationship with other local pharmacies and if we notice somebody who's um, possibly buying the medicine a bit, a bit too frequently for what we'd like, um, we just we'd ring like like the local boots we'd just ring and say just be careful this person um this is a <coughs> description possibly buying this um yeah just keep an eye on them and we've had to have words with patients just to say um yeah maybe you're buying this a little bit too frequently um yeah we can help you out with this obviously doctors don't, don't get along with patients there's more doctors are getting more and more stretched not enough time to do the uh, full needs assessment and it is easy uh, for people to just say uh, I need a repeat prescription. You have to just sometimes you think I can't do it and you think you're not strong and and maybe you don't feel strong and I don't want people to think out there well actually you know I'm not in that place right now so I won't go and get help because you never feel like you're going to be in that place. I would just say just go for it. The, the hardest part is asking for help. I can, cannot tell you how amazing my family have been. They, I just thought, you know, I'd been, I'd gone out my way, I'd been to uni, I'd done, you know, two degrees, I'd done this, I'd done yeah. that, you know, that would make them proud. And actually, I just thought everything else that I'd done was just a disgrace and they wouldn't want anything to do with me. Um, but they're not ashamed of you. They want you to get help. I remember my daughter just putting her hand up my hand and just hugging me and telling me she was so proud of me. And I thought, proud of what? But it takes a lot to make a change in your life. If, for example, uh, someone is, is ordering frequently before it's due, um, if there are frequent excuses uh, that, that their prescription has been lost um, or mislaid, um, then, then those are sort of signs that, that actually something may be going wrong and someone may be developing a problem. You can buy any prescription drug you want, you can buy it online. We tend to, we tend to zoom in on young people, but this, this isn't just a young person's problem. This is a problem from, uh, from young right through to old. 
when that withdraws, when that goes away, and depending upon which drug you're, you're abusing, the, the, the stark reality is, is that you can never achieve that first feeling. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to achieve the unachievable. Yeah, withdrawal symptoms, they're not very nice. I would have uh, be sweating, it, uh, I would have muscle, very intense muscle cramps, you can't, I couldn't sleep, I would have hallucinations um, at one stage. When I was trying to come off via my GP and cutting down, I was seeing devils in the beams and hearing orchestras coming through the, the plug sockets. You know, you, you kind of go, there's a sort of opioid, delu you know, delirium. I had six weeks and that's the amount of money I had and actually it worked very well in focusing me on getting off them. So I think perhaps if there was a little bit more care with who gets prescribed what and when and also having been prescribed how that prescription gets repeated then perhaps that might help. But I wouldn't know how to do that because obviously the resources of the health service are stretched to the limit now. So the easy option when someone goes to see the GP is prescription. I realised that everything that I'd been through was really extreme, but that also if it happened to me, it could happen to anybody because you know, we're only ever a case of back pain or a, or a car accident away from exposure to these kinds of drugs. My drug dealer was a doctor, doctor, had the plug from Big Pharma, Pharma, he said that he was...